All right. Chapter 12, The Fisher King. It's time, I guess. I awoke with a start, sitting straight up in bed, a strangled cry on my lips. My breaths were coming in rapid succession, and there was a cool sweat on my skin. For a moment, I stared at the foot of the bed in confusion. Whoa, what happened to your hair? <laughs> Did you have a shower, or what, what's going on? Hey, you all right? I started violently at the unexpected voice, sudden adrenaline pushing the remnants of the dream firmly into oblivion. Were you dreaming of the Fisher King? The sight of Caleb next to the bed elicited an instinctive yelp as I yanked the sheets up in a panic, before I remembered why he was there. Oh uh, yeah. I let out a deflated sigh and flopped over. <sighs> what a way to wake up. I have to admit that's not the greeting I was expecting this morning. Me either. <laughs> he chuckled and I felt his weight on the bed next to me. His warm hand passed over my shoulder before resting between my shoulder blades. Are you always such a sunshiny morning person? I rolled over, glaring up at his still messy hair and slight smile through half-closed eyes. That's what your hair looked like after last night's shenanigans? Damn. Caleb doesn't do anything halfway, I guess. My face warmed up. He was far too handsome with his hair like that. And there wasn't a trace of sleep left in his face. As if he'd been awake for a while. Kudos to you for not disappearing in the middle of the day. Are you? Not usually. The grin faded, and he studied my face. I was just about to wake you. Looked like you were having a bad dream. I think I was. It's already gone, though. I think it was something about relics. We were in Pythia, and I don't remember anything else. Was it a dream or a premonition? I don't know. It's all vague already. I don't think it was a premonition. Hmm. <laughs> Even so, it might be best to start keeping track of your dreams. You've already shown yourself to be pretty sensitive to sight and foresight-based abilities, and it's common for those kinds of things to seep in during sleep. After this assignment, we might want to have Vaughn work with you on it. It's not something I can help with, unfortunately. I'm sure it was just stress. Anyway, good morning. There's the greeting I was hoping for. He kissed me as he said it. Hmm. I wrapped my arms around him as he pressed several light kisses to my lips. Caleb rested his forehead against mine, letting out a wistful sigh before he straightened again. Sadly, we have to get an early start today. And we have just enough time to clean up and get going. Ugh. Can I call in sick? I doubt it. Fine. I sat up with a groan, only to have something dropped on my head, obscuring my view. Ah, my robe. <laughs> I yanked it off and glared at Caleb, who was shooting me a grin as he disappeared into the living room. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't keep the stupid smile off my face as I tumbled out of bed and went to take a shower. I already knew our morning briefings would be lengthy and intense, more so than what I'd experienced so far. My first assignment barely even had a briefing. The second was a little more involved. This time, though. This time we had a lot to go over, including detailed plans of how they hoped things would go down at the auction. It was only a hope, though. There were a lot of unknowns involved in this mission, since we were running on pitifully little information. We also had to address several contingency plans in case things went badly for us. Caleb and I, Magnus explained, would enter the auction with fake identification. Magnus had uncovered a little more information about the venue and had acquired invitations. We had more insight of what to expect thanks to him, but not much. From our vantage point, we would monitor what relics were being auctioned off and who they went to. Magnus didn't want us to draw attention to ourselves so we wouldn't be betting on them, just watching. He said that we'd be following up on those later. Smart. The one we were really after was the so-called replicating relic they were supposedly unveiling. If it was legitimate, our goal was to obtain it at all costs. If everything else failed, acquiring that relic was the one thing we had to accomplish, even if it meant blowing cover and fighting our way out with it. Meanwhile, Ari and Vaughn would infiltrate the auction unseen. If possible, they were to find out more information about the host, who we weren't sure would attend, and who was backing them up. 
Shutting this thing down for good meant figuring out who was behind it. The King's Guard would, sta would station themselves outside to keep watch on the area and be available if we needed backup. Two other units would also be on standby within teleport range of their knights. Much of this was information that we'd already gone over here and there in the preceding days, so the meetings were summarizing what I already knew. Caleb spent a lot of time coaching me on what I should do and how I should behave while we were there. My presence was largely to help control the situation if we had to deal with any active relics. So I was to stick close to him and avoid interacting with others unless I had to. Weapons we knew weren't allowed at the venue, but Magnus said many guests were likely to have Esper bodyguards. Even if they had side detectors, we wouldn't stand out from that regard. Even so, I was to mimic the first normal person I spotted and keep my psi in that form until we were inside safely. They felt it was unlikely for there to be psi dampeners, given that many attendees probably wouldn't show if their bodyguards were hobbled. But Ari and Vaughn had equipment to disrupt any dampeners, just in case. <gasps> it's a different dress and it's beautiful! Oh, what a gorgeous color! I love it! I love it so much! And Caleb, you also look very nice in a suit, I will admit. Maybe not as nice as Kaysa and Jack, but you still clean up pretty good. I want you to stay alert. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Shield yourself or take cover at the first sign of trouble. Don't worry, I will. We had just finished getting dressed in our totally not undercover endgame agent's attire, and Caleb was giving me a final pep talk. He set his hands on my shoulders and leaned forward, resting his head against mine before pulling me against him. I wish we weren't taking you right into the heart of this. At the very least, I wish we could leave you outside, hidden somewhere. But there's no guarantee you can get to where you're needed in time if we need that ability of yours. So we have to keep you close to where the relics are. I'll be okay. I know. I'll stay close by the entire time. I don't intend to leave your side, so just take your lead from me. If things go badly, I don't care about the mission objective. I'm getting you out of there, and I don't want to hear complaints. You won't. As long as you're safe, too. If you get yourself hurt trying to protect me, I'll complain a lot, though. Then I guess I can't get hurt, either. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Let's go. Ari and the others are waiting. It would have been convenient if Ari could teleport everyone to the appropriate location. Turns out Ari's teleportation had limits. I'd learned that during our last trip to Pythia. Generally, he could take up to two passengers with him over very long distances. Any more than that stressed his sigh. He could take small groups in rapid succession, though, because it was less tiring that way. That hadn't initially made sense to me, but he explained it like lifting a heavy load. If you were trying to carry a crate of heavy objects, you might hurt yourself lifting it all at once. But if you took the items out and carried them one by one, you could get the job done without harming yourself. Four teams was a lot, though. Even for him. Endgame had a system of quick travel that alternated between teleporting short distances and using high-speed transports between connection points. It allowed a trip that would take a day to be done in just a few hours. It was useful, given that even the fastest ground travel was slow, and air travel that distance wasn't possible because of the unstable atmospheric conditions of the planet. And we're here! I was less nervous than I expected by the time we reached Pythia. Everything was happening fast, yet weirdly slow. It had a strange calming effect. The auction was a semi-formal event, requiring all the attendees to dress up, and we were no different. We pulled to the curb and Caleb got out first, helping me out of the car before allowing a valet to take it away. You seem less nervous than you were earlier. Does being nervous help with anything? Well, it's good to be a little on edge. Wouldn't want you getting too comfortable either. If I fall asleep on your shoulder, you'll know I'm comfortable. As long as I'm awake, we're good. I'll keep that in mind. Falling asleep on assignment is generally frowned on. Just remember that our part is over the minute we win the target. Storming the place isn't our job. With Endgame's endless funds, the price wasn't a concern. If somehow we lost, that was when things would become problematic. But hopefully it wouldn't come to that. The goal was to get through this without suspicion or violence. Hmm. I was gonna say, ooh, new background, but then I squinted and I'm like, wait, isn't this... 
This might have been the background where we had our show down with Brennan, but it's in like decent condition right now instead of a mess. Maybe. It looks a little familiar. The venue for the auction was a restaurant, not some kind of shady auction house. Makes sense. I guess when dealing in illicit items, it was smart to handle business in a non-suspicious place. They checked for weapons at the door and allowed us inside with no issue. So that at least was one hurdle crossed. We would be out of contact with Ari and Vanessa just in case they were monitoring transmissions. Even if we had a secure channel, we didn't want to risk our communications being detected. So we weren't to contact them unless an emergency arose. I didn't like being isolated from the rest of the team like this, but it couldn't be helped. Come on. We don't have to mingle, so let's find a quiet place to watch. He took two glasses of champagne from a server, but cautioned me not to drink as he handed me one. Not that I wanted to, anyway. There was no way I wanted to be in any way impaired during all this. And then he stared me off to the side where he could monitor the rest of the room. We just need to look like we're having a private conversation. Don't be too obvious about watching anyone else. Just keep your ears open. I'm looking forward to the day all this comes naturally, and I stop feeling like I've transmigrated into a crime novel. That'll come with time and experience. It was weird watching the other attendees. They had said some people here were leaders of Delphine's underworld, and some were top people in its crime circles. Some of the most wanted and dangerous people on the planet. But they all looked normal. I don't know what I expected Mafia leaders to look like. Criminals didn't have a specific look to them. And neither did good people. But it still felt strange. People were chatting, smiling, laughing. It created an odd disconnect between who I knew they were and how they appeared. It's weird to see some of these people at the same location. I pretended to take a sip of my glass as I looked at him. A lot of them are rivals, enemies. People who might try to kill each other in a different situation. You never see them all in one place like this. I see a few familiar faces, too. It's odd to me that there are politicians here. People I've seen in interviews and the like. Well, there are some of the most corrupt people on this side of the planet. It doesn't shock me one bit. What'll shock you is to know there's a senator from the Triad across the room. I didn't realize this thing reached that far. I'm not shocked. The Triad has its fair share of shady government programs, too. He let out a soft swear as he continued to scan the room. And again, I had to fight to not look over my shoulder. Come on. Unfortunately, I see something we have to deal with right now. What is- There's someone even more troublesome here, and we can't ignore it. Yep, I knew Jack was gonna show up. There was an urgency to his tone, an edge that hadn't been there until that moment. He took my hand and tucked it close to his side as he started away from our little spot and across the room. I hurried after him, trying not to look worried. What's going on? Caleb set his glass on the tray of a passing waiter, and I followed suit, still unsure what was happening. I scanned the crowd ahead of us, trying to determine where we were heading, and that's when I saw a familiar face. Jack? Oh, great. Caleb. Jack would recognize us for sure. We knew they might be here, but we were hoping against hope not to have to interact with them. At the very least, we were definitely hoping Jack wouldn't be present. Hey, looking good, boy. I think Jack's got Caleb beat in the fit department. Caleb quickened his pace enough to catch up, but Jack turned just at the moment Caleb reached for his arm. His eyes went wide before an easy smile settled on his face. His gaze flicked to me, then back to Caleb. Well, look at this. Didn't expect to see you here. I had a feeling you and your boss might show. The pleasant tone they took with each other shocked me. Good to see you again, Kale. And Morgan, it's been a while. Yeah. This is the most awkward situation I've been in, in my entire life. Didn't know they sent invitations to this event to your neck of the woods. Wouldn't you know, a mutual friend was able to procure an invitation for us and we just had to stop by. If it's who I'm thinking of, I wouldn't call him a friend. They were exchanging pleasant conversation, but my heart felt like it was about to leap out of my chest. I kept expecting one of them to throw a punch. I could practically feel the energy crackling off the two of them. Hey, Kesa, good to see you again. It's been ages. 
Jack, there you are. An unfamiliar man with dark hair stepped around Jack, looking at Caleb and me with mild interest. Now I'm curious, like, what would happen here if you had run into Kesa in the beginning? And then, like, yo, wait, is that, uh, what was the name he went by? Gosh. I can't remember what fake name he gave me now. It's gone. <laughs> anyway, that guy. Kesa, I was looking for you. Kesa. I recognize that name. It was an unusual one. Kesa... Fianchetto? The Fianchettos were a well-known family, so it made sense for him to be here. It surprised me Jack knew him, though. You must be Morgan Leone. Jack has told me quite a lot about you. Did he? You could say Case is my boss. His boss. That means he's... It's unfortunate we weren't able to meet until now. I had been looking forward to it. Unfortunate for you, maybe. I had a feeling I was much better off, though. <laughs> There's pros and cons. Well, this is an awkward situation, isn't it? I wonder what we're going to do about it. Didn't expect to run into the younger Mr. Fianchetto himself, much less this particular bodyguard. Though I guess we knew Crimson would show its face. This was going to get ugly, wasn't it? Not everything I do is for the benefit of Crimson, Caleb, was it? And I'm not here in that capacity. Really. I have many reasons for wanting to see this current situation end. He closed the distance between us a little, his expression still serious. Frankly, I don't wish to see these items in my father's hands any more than you do. It would be wise for us to not draw attention or create a commotion. I believe our goal is similar. How surprising. The rumors that little Fianchetto is going up against his father are true. Caleb... Leave it, Jack. I have no intention of being provoked by this kind of remark. The rumors are true. Now you know. Do be sure to include it in your mission report. I'm sure your boss would find it useful if he wasn't already well aware of it. I was very much like the odd one out in all this, and I wasn't sure what would happen next. Magnus had said it was likely groups like Crimson wanted to keep the relics off the streets. That tracked with what Kesa said, but could we believe it? You know, this works out now that I think about it. What does? You. Me. Here. I don't think I even want to know what the hell you're talking about. Morgan, let's- Wait. Hold on a minute. Hear me out. Get your hand off me. Kesa and I both sighed at the exact same moment. <laughs> Jack let out an amused snort, holding up his hands. Kale, I saw something earlier that needs checking out. That's why I was looking for Kesa. I don't want to leave him alone for long, but I need to take a closer look. You should come with me. What did you see? You want me to just blurt it out here? If you're not willing to do that much, then I guess you're on your own. Could be relevant to keeping your... comrades... Safe. I'm sure there are at least two others lurking around. Forget it. I'm not dragging Morgan. Leave her with Kesa. They can look out for each- No! And here I was hoping you'd be looking forward to working with me again. Guess I'll handle it alone. But don't expect me to go out of my way to watch out for those two. He started away but glanced back at us. Oh. And just keep in mind that we might know a lot more about this place and the people behind it than you do. Wait. Jack. Morgan? Jack paused and glanced back at me. We should listen to him, Caleb. He's not wrong when he says our information is lacking. I pulled Caleb closer, leaning in to whisper to him. If he's telling the truth, then it'll be on us if the others get hurt or if something goes badly. We can't ignore information just because Jack is annoying. Fine. I like to imagine Jack heard that because he could probably also improve his hearing. <laughs> I'm annoying. He turned around and motioned Jack closer again. Jack glanced past us at Kesa, who just nodded. Make it quick. 
What do you want? I want you to just tell us what you saw that's bothering you. You can't expect Caleb to run off with you if we don't know what's going on. If he'd just come with me, he'd find out. If you're just going to be coy, then don't act like you're doing us a favor. Jack, spit it out. This is pointless. Thank you, Kesa, for being level-headed. Look, I've seen what looks like devices of some kind planted around the building. Could just be a way to block transmissions, but I don't think so. I wanted to take a closer look at them. Actually, this would be a great chance to get rid of a lot of powerful people in one spot. Could they be bombs? Between the two of us, we can cover more ground. Try to locate all of them and figure out what they are. Since we're both rooks, it's not like we have to be right on top of them to get a good look. Caleb and I shared a concerned look. Devices. Wouldn't that mean there was more going on here than just an auction? Just go with him. I'll be fine, and I'll... stay close to Kesa? I gave the other man a questioning look, to which he nodded. We'll stay together while the two of you are away. Not that it gives me much comfort, given who you are. I mean, if he's anything like our boss, I can take him. Caleb and Jack both looked amused at that. I didn't hazard a glance at Kesa to see how he'd taken it. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. That type is notoriously weak. One punch and he'll fold like wet paper. Please don't punch my boss. I'm the one who'll have to deal with him afterwards. As long as your boss behaves, we'll be fine. I don't want to leave you here like this. Then come back quickly. Fine. I don't like it, but I don't think we have another choice. And you. Don't do anything you'll regret later. I never do. He glared one last time before striding away and disappearing into the crowd with Jack. Well, well. I did not have in my bingo card a kind of side date with Kesa, but here we are. I'll take it. Hopefully he comes back soon. Don't look too worried. Jack isn't the only person of mine here. He's just the one that sticks closest to me. If something happens, I'll ensure your safety. I'm not worried about my safety. Is that so? Are you as able to take care of yourself as you'd have me believe? In this amount of time? If I wasn't, do you think I'd be here? I'm not sure. I'll admit I'm surprised they sent you out this soon. Sometimes it's like that. I suppose so. It's... Disappointing you ended up there instead of here. Maybe for you. Perhaps for you as well. Please tell me this isn't where you try to convince me to join your side. I can't give you back your normal life, but I can give you something closer to it than they can offer. I hope you realize that. Um. Okay, we're not doing cautious for sure. Um, I don't want to be, I don't know. I mean, maybe stubborn's like the way to go because of Caleb, but we, okay. We just convinced Caleb to work with Jack. So let's not also alienate Kesa. Let's just, I like this one. It's a little more middle of the road and like, come on, dude, <laughs> it's not going to happen. You're being too obvious, I hope you realize. What do you mean? It doesn't matter if the guise is giving me back normalcy. I'm not foolish enough to think you're that altruistic. You just want a person like me here, on your side. Isn't that why Jack was following me around in the first place? I won't deny that's true. But you're mistaken if you believe we want to bring you here for your... unique abilities alone. Jack wasn't lying when he told you we are creating a safe place for Uspers here. That could be a place for you as well. And what do you get out of that? Everything here is give and take. Of course there's value for us if you are with the court. But I'm not lying when I say I would help you live as normally as possible, or achieve as much of your dreams as you can. I let out a soft, regretful laugh, smiling a little sadly. A few weeks ago, this offer would have been tempting. 
Now it just felt a little empty. <laughs> Living a normal life isn't possible for me at all anymore. That's my point. Perhaps at another time and place I could convince you that wasn't true. I very much doubt it. I see. In any case, it appears they're about to get started. We must take our seats and hope Jack and Caleb can find us. It surprised me he'd let it go that easily. But he was correct that it looked like they were setting up to get started. Case is a smart guy. At any rate, I could see what Magnus meant about them having a weird relationship with this guy. Sticking close to Case as he led me to a table towards the back, I couldn't help but look around and wonder where Caleb and Jack were. I hope everything is alright. It shouldn't be too difficult for them to find us, but I hope they didn't draw attention to us if and when they did. As the auction started, waiters passed out devices through which we could send bids. And a gentleman with a disarming smile took the stage. He introduced himself as Brennan Raw and said he would be the evening's auction caller. Brennan with a disarming smile. Now this I have to see. He wasn't an esper. His sigh was very faint and green-tinged, just like all the other non-espers in the room. So is it Brennan, or is it somebody pretending to be Brennan? I mean, Brennan's very capable of hiding himself. I checked, just to be sure. After his introduction, they brought out the first selection of relics. I mean, if it is Brennan, like, kudos to him for being that bold. They were starting with smaller ones, mostly weapons based on the, on the descriptions. There were short demonstrations given before the bidding started for each one. I kept my eyes to the caller's face or the device in my hand. I didn't want to cause any unexpected issues with the relics. And since my control of disrupting them was still dodgy at best, I couldn't risk it by looking too hard at any of them. That always seemed to be the catalyst in the past. I was waiting for the big relic. But I suspected it would show up in the middle or towards the end of the auction. Kesa, however, got into a short bidding war over one particular relic, and looked relieved when he ultimately won. As they moved on to the next item, he leaned over to me with a knowing smile. I wasn't going to bid on these smaller ones, but I suppose if you're here, there's no need to hold back. What do you mean by that? I said it before. We want these things off the streets, but the big draw is the one they say can replicate other relics. I assume that one is the one you came for. It's what everyone is here for. But I don't doubt you'll win that one with little effort, so I don't have to worry about it. What are you going to do with the ones you buy if not use them? Throw them in the Ouroboros Sea and pray no one finds them again. As you can imagine, I find them... disconcerting. The fact they're so alien to me even with my abilities. I don't like it at all. I assume it's the same for your boss, given none of you make use of them. And I'm sure you would if you could. I don't know about that. For even king ranks to be unable to understand these things makes me wary. It makes me wary too. Our espers can't interface with them, but somehow the people behind this can. It's odd. Well, I've been wondering about that same thing for a while now, too. The only one that came close to being able to interact with relics was me. Magna said it was because I was mimicking king ranks, but neither of the king ranks we knew of could do it. If there was a replicating relic, then how did they figure out how to use it? Setting aside whether these relics were replicated or found, how did they figure out how to operate so many of them safely? Do you know who's behind this auction? We believe the group behind this is called The Host. We know little about them. They aren't new, but something changed within the last year. We know they have been gathering espers. We aren't sure what their motivations are. Espers. There was a suspicion growing in my mind. It was something we hadn't been able to rule out, but something we also had no proof of at this point. But it was the only option that made sense. Have you heard of the Fisher King? I'm surprised you have. We don't know much. Just a few things we've picked up here and there. We know little about him, too. We've heard the name come up a few times regarding the host. Is it... an Esper? Maybe F-Class? An F-Class King rank? It could explain a lot. It isn't that we haven't considered the possibility, but I'm also F-Class. 
So I suppose we just assumed. You shouldn't. F-Class, even within the same rank, can differ significantly. Then you believe... A round of applause drowned out his voice, interrupting our conversation. I had gotten so engrossed in talking with him, I'd lost track of the auction itself. That would have been funny if it's like, And the winning bid goes to... Blurg. And like, oh no, I was supposed to bid on that one. I realized two people were rolling out a cart with a cloth-covered item on it. <laughs> wow! Uh, I love what you're wearing, and those gloves are everything? Those fingerless gloves are everything? Are those gloves? Oh, I don't know what you call this, but I'm a fan. I'm just a fan of, <laughs> of this guy. <laughs> I'll admit. I'll admit I'm just a fan. Alright, <clears throat> moving on. Now for what you've all been waiting for. A very special item from today's catalog. I straightened, glancing around for Kayla, because I expected him to be back by now. They had given me the authority and information I needed to bid, but I hadn't expected to be dealing with it alone. However, if that was what I thought it was, I couldn't wait on him to return. The auctioneer pulled the cloth off the item, and... Wait, is that...? Before anyone could react, the man slammed his hand down on the device and an almost invisible blue pulse flooded the room. EMP emitter? But why? Several people jumped to their feet, but there was something else that had attracted my attention. A familiar figure that materialized out of the shadows next to the auctioneer, Sylvia. Oh no. What is she doing here?